am. I'm so excited. My name is Melissa Chipman, and I connected with Courtney, who works at Oil Life, and I was talking to her about my art classes and some of the things that I do with my art students and wanted to just share that more broadly, share it with the world, because I think it's really effective. And she she said, hey, actually, we've got a class opening coming up in October, and I would love for you to do that. And so anyway, I am honored to be here. I'm so excited. And I hope that this can be helpful for you, or maybe if you end up doing doing this exercise with some of your kids or a, a friend. Um, 2020 has been a crazy year. So um, any way that we can work through our emotions and and feel like our voice is heard or our emotions are heard, I think is something worth looking into. So um, without further ado, I'm just going to share my screen with you for just one second. Hold on. Um, okay, give me just a second. Okay, we'll go over here and present. All right, so uh, the title of this course that we're doing tonight is Art from the Heart, Emotional Healing. And this is what we're going to be going over today. So drawing upon feelings, I'll talk a little bit about my background in art. And then also we'll go through some of the emotional causes or physical ailments um, and talk about what called messages from the body. We'll look at some reflexology, the energy almanac, and methods for emotional release. So um, first of all, I just wanted to tell you guys that when I was a little girl from, I mean, literally my earliest memories, my parents every Sunday would have us journal. And before I could even write, my mom would write in my journal for me, which I just, <laughs> I have not been that dedicated, but uh, with my own son. But I appreciate the routine that that put into my life and how my parents really valued us writing down not only our history, but our feelings. And before I could even write, I would just draw. And so I would draw things from the week and I started drawing my feelings. I mean, my earliest memories are of me drawing in that journal. And so that's just always been a part of my life. I never thought I was going to be an artist, but uh, I took a painting class in high school and ended up loving it. And by the time I graduated, people were paying me to paint for them. And since then I've done huge murals all over the world and have been, and then I just stumbled upon an art teaching job and thought I'd give it a shot. And so now I've been teaching art from my home for nine years and I've been teaching high school art classes for uh, this is my seventh year. So anyway, I love it. I love connecting with adults and with teens, and I have an adult class coming right after this. So um, anyway, if you are in Utah, which I know a lot of you are online, um, clear, well, we're all online, but if you're out of state, I do some virtual lessons as well. If that's something you want, we'll talk about that at the end more. But anyway, I just wanted to show you really quick, hopefully this takes me to my Instagram. Um, as far as like journaling feelings, something that I, I know my Instagram is like mostly, it's all over the place. I don't really focus it just on my art. But for example, I had an experience with a friend this last summer and um, she was, fell victim to um, some really sad events that happened with her ex-husband and her children, they all passed away and they threw a party for her and had tons of balloons, or not for her, but they like a celebration of life for all the kids. And so there was tons of balloons and it just looked like this amazing, happy festival, but everybody was so sad. And that was like my way of expressing how I felt about that event because there were balloons, but really it just, there were lots of tears along with that. And, um, Anyway, so in my adult life, I still continue to, to journal my feelings. And um, anyway, I just wanted to share that particular one with you. Uh, 
And I had to laugh because when I was asked to do this, <laughs> we did not look in the Energy Almanac from Oil Life. So if you guys have this book, you can go ahead and open up to it. Go grab it off your shelf. Uh, but I will just show you on page 113 for the month of October. So funny. It says, October 13th, Mer Mercury turns retrograde in Scorpio, seeking the truth in the hidden, intuitively connecting with what isn't being said. So I love that. It was meant to be that we we're going to have this class today um, <laughs> because we are connecting today with what isn't being said. So, um, yeah, you can go and check out those pages. I'm not going to read all of that to you, but there's some awesome resources in there. And I wanted to read one more thing in there. So if you look on, let's see. So I've got my virtual background going on. But if you check out, let's see. Well, it doesn't say the page number on there, but it's like two pages down from that, from October. So it said, journal this. What have I made so vital, valuable, and real about my point of view that keeps me from having more joy? What is the value of play? And I, for me, oh man, I'm such a yellow personality. I love to play. <laughs> if you, like, I don't know, I have, I have issues with some of those personality charts because I don't think we can, like, just throw everybody into one thing. Um, but I love to play. I love to just suck the marrow out of life. And I try to squeeze things into every single minute of every single day. And sometimes it wears me out. <laughs> but um, I've also been looking at different things in my life that maybe I've been holding on to. And I stumbled on an amazing book recently. Well, not too recently. I guess it's been, yeah, never mind. It hasn't been recent. It's been like 14 years <laughs> because it was right after my son was born. But it's called Messages from the Body by Narayan Singh. I don't know if I said that right. I'm sorry if I slaughtered the pronunciation there. But you can literally look up every emotional cause behind every physical ailment. And it's an expensive book, like a hundred bucks, but I tell you, it has been worth every penny for me because I can look up any, anything, like if my back is hurting or I'm getting a headache or my neck or, I mean, it, it's like an encyclopedia for your body and you can just look up anything on there and, um, and it gives you three different possible causes for what's going on. And they're either childhood related, parental related, or like something that's going on right now. And it might be one of those, it might be all three of those. And he gives a lot of explanations for what those things are. So take it or leave it. If that's not your cup of tea, that's okay. I just, for me, it has been so awesome to be able to look at that and really dig deep about what the emotional causes might be. And then to figure out, once you find that out, then figuring out how to reset that. And so um, I also, I love the reflexology chart that um, I got this from Oil Life, but it says doTERRA. So I'm not exactly sure, Courtney, if it's <laughs> exclusively your guys' or not, but I love this. And they're so, it, it's so amazing that our bodies have energy that flows to the tips of our hands and to the tips of our toes and that we can connect to every single organ in our bodies through, through our extremities and, um, and our feet are what ground us, right? And our hands are what reach out and connect us to other people. And so anyway i highly suggest looking at that and taking time to touch your feet and hands and if you go get a massage um i always make sure that they finish my massage by massaging my hands and my feet it just like just it brings it to conclusion and i just feel like it's a whole massage once they've done that um 
Anyway, so go ahead and check that out because sometimes if you're experiencing emotional stress, it will manifest physically. And um, with that, I wanted to read this quote as well. There's, there's been some misquotes about Albert Einstein, about him talking about energy. And he did say, it followed from the special theory of relativity, relativity that mass and energy are both but different manifestations of the same thing, a somewhat unfamiliar concept for the average mind, which for me, like if you get down to the nitty gritty, we're all made up of protons, neutrons, and electrons. It's all energy. And every choice you make, every thought you have is either positive or negative and can affect you physically and emotionally. So, um, and there's also a quote, I'll, if you need me to, I can send you this quote by Bashar, but, or the link to it, I mean. It says, match the frequency of the reality you want and you cannot help but get that reality. So anyway, we're not gonna focus all on that tonight, but I, I truly feel like changing the energy that you're putting out will have an effect on you. And speaking of energy and emotions, so this is the doTERRA, I mean, sorry, the Oil Life Essential Emotions book. And it says, your guide to process, release, and live free. And I don't know how many of you, let's see, I didn't, I saw some comments coming up, but I lost them. Where are they? Um, let's see. Sorry, where's the chat? Here we are. Oh, cool. The links are in there. Nice. So, oh, was it scratching before? Am I okay now? Are you guys good? Okay. <laughs> Darn it. I'm so sorry. Um, all right. Yes, I guess there is. Okay. Oh, I'm so sorry. It was scratchy. Oh, all right. Well, anyway, if you go to the emotions guide and, oh, it like took me through our little art exercise without me realizing it. So let's see. I'm going to come back here. Let's go back. Okay, so we are going to go to the emotions guide. And if you look in the back, I love this because let's say that you have a certain emotion that you're feeling and it takes you through some visualizations that you can do. Uh, for example, let's see, chaotic. Okay, 2020 has been a little bit chaotic. Let's look at that one. So give some suggestions for oils, lemon, vetiver, lemon myrtle, rescuer, holiday peace, turmeric. Um, but those aren't all oils anyway. Let's see, charitable, wild orange, spikenard, and rose. Sorry if I mispronounced that. Okay, is it possible that I can be successful while another is also successful? Do I feel loved and accepted? I am now filled with charity. I now choose to see the best in others. See yourself removing a blindfold from your eyes, revealing yourself and others in their best light. See charity and gratitude flowing through your body towards all others on your path. So it just gives you some cool visuals that can take you into a more positive space. And so I will refer back to that for our next exercise, but so, Without further ado, let's move on to the art section, which is one of my favorites. So I don't know if you brought with yourself any art supplies, like a pen or paper or some, maybe some watercolors. I've got some, some pens here. I've got watercolor brush and watercolor set. I don't know that I'm gonna be able to take time to do this, but I'm gonna walk you guys through this exercise. And then I encourage you to do it again for some other topics once we're done. So to start out, I want you all, if you have your piece of paper, I want you to write down, first of all, think of a specific memory in your life and you can choose if it's a good memory or a bad memory, whether it's a positive memory or negative memory, um, but go ahead and you don't need to like write that whole thing down. You could say like, a family member passing away, or you could say, 
um, a lost relationship, or maybe it's a good memory where you got married, or maybe um, you found a beautiful home where you're just like standing on top of a mountain and it was just peaceful and gorgeous or whatever that memory is, go ahead and, and write down a specific memory in your life. Okay. So just keep it simple, but something that you can like refer back to so that you remember what, what it was. All right. Next, write down on separate lines. So underneath the title of that memory, I want you to write down all the emotions that come to mind with this particular event. So, um, for example, the day my son was born, I just remember feeling overwhelmed, so happy. Um, I felt like this mantle of responsibility suddenly resting on me as a new mother. Um, anyway, so go ahead and write down all the emotions. I'm just giving you some examples. <laughs> Hopefully that helps. So, and write them down, like I said, on separate lines, because then next to those, we're gonna do something else next to those. All right. So next to each emotion, I want you to assign a color to each of those emotions. I'm not gonna tell you what color those are because it always astounds me with my students how they see different colors as different things. Like in the US, we see black as a symbol of, of death and we wear black to funerals. And from what I studied, I, I assume it's still the same in China, um, in my anthropology classes in college, we learned that in China, like white represents death. So whatever those emotions could represent, um, I mean, whatever those colors could represent for you, that's up to you. Um, so go ahead and take a minute and write down the colors that you would assign to each of those emotions. For some people, orange is happiness. For some people, orange is like frustration. Or, like we all have our, our favorite colors. <laughs> okay. So, hopefully I gave you guys enough time to do that. Are we good? Am I going too fast? Can you hear me? It was like Lisa Flynn. I can see your face. Will you give me a thumbs up if you can hear me? Okay, awesome, thank you. <laughs> All right, let's see. So I want you to close your eyes. Some of you are already off screen, so it doesn't matter, but close your eyes. Imagine this specific specific moment in your life and what does the energy from that moment feel like to you? Is it heavy? Does it feel stuck? Is it radiating? Is it moving around? Is it, where is that energy? Is it moving around in your head? Is it in your heart? Um, so just visualize that for a moment. And then I want you to take a second and, oops, and then write down what that energy looks like. So just scribble that down on your paper real quick. And I'm just going to show you an example from one of my students. <laughs> I don't know if you can see that very well. Let's see. The camera. <laughs> Check that energy out. <laughs> so it do, you don't have to be super detailed on this, just something so that when you look back at it, and you want to create some specific artwork surrounding it you'll have you'll have that so okay so you're gonna write down that or like just sketch out what that energy looks like and then next i want you to think about what simple symbols could represent aspects of that event without being too illustrative so what I mean by that is, 
for example, like we're not illustrating a book here. We're just creating a visual representation of our feelings without having to feel the pressure to be able to draw representational people or, do you know, does that make sense? So I want you to be able to write down a symbol, like um, maybe, maybe you were a new teacher and it's your first day of school is really simplified, but maybe an apple could be a symbol, right? And maybe you have lots of emotions surrounding that. And so you just like draw scribbles around that or um, maybe the energy is just bursting out from, from doing that. So go ahead and take a second and just write down some ideas for what some symbols might be. Oh, sorry. Let's see. Just. Let's see, Jen. I think I might have missed. Let's see, I had to feed people who asked the first question, so I'm totally behind. Oh, okay. Um, so the first question here, I'll go back really quick, was think of a specific memory in your life that you and you can choose if it's good or bad. And then write down on a separate piece of paper. I mean, sorry, on separate lines, all the emotions that come to mind with that particular event. And then next to those emotions, assign the color to each of them. And then close your eyes. <clears throat> I'm going too fast for you, I'm sorry. <laughs> uh, but maybe you can take screenshots of each of these. So close your eyes and visualize what the energy feels like. Was that okay, Jen? If you want me to go back, I can go back through those. Okay. Feel free to write me in. I mean, this will be recorded, so you can go back through it again, too. So, all right, next, get another piece of paper, whether, and I don't know how many of you came prepared with your art supplies, but get another piece of paper or a canvas or watercolor paper, and you can start to illustrate what you want this to look like. And if you want to, um, you can make a few thumbnail sketches of what you think you might wanna do it. And I mean, with the thumbnail sketches, they're just small, tiny drawings. So you don't feel too intimidated to like do it big. So just start out with a few simple doodles of how you might represent your feelings. And like I said, you can, um, you can just, you can do one or two or three, or you can just go for it. If you already have in your mind how you want to represent your feelings. And, and then you can, let's see, is this going back? Okay. And then using whatever supplies you have, you can start to draw, paint, or color the things you just described. So I'm going to just show you a very simple, well, I'm going to show you a few things that some of my students recently did that aren't necessarily in my art class. We have what's called a squad at my school, which is just kind of like a homeroom. Um, but so this was one, so super simple, right? But you're just drawing your feelings. So this is one, oops, come back. There we go. Um, that one of my students drew and everyone, oh, there we go. Everyone was guessing what what it was and let's just take two seconds and I wanna see what some of your guesses are for what this picture represents. What do you think? Feel free to type your response or you can unmute yourself if you want. Oh, you guys can't see me. Okay, I'm going to stop sharing my screen. Thank you. Okay, etch a sketch. <laughs> nice. I love it. Okay, so this is one that one of my students 
connected. What do you guys think it represents? <laughs> yeah, she's sketched. That's hilarious. Jumping rope. So if this is feelings, right? So I will just tell you it. She said on the outside, she feels happy or she has to present herself as being a happy person. And on the inside, she's really depressed. So this was how she represented her feelings of being like basically having to put on a show for everybody. And um, let's see, what do you think this one is? I'm going to stop. Hold on. Let me take my virtual background off so that it stops disappearing. Let's see. We'll just get to see my, my classroom. They're in the middle of painting a mural over here on the wall. So, okay. So here is another one. You guys want to take some guesses? <laughs> New beginning and happiness, happy sunny day, bright and warm. Let's see what else do we have? Yep, so this one was actually another student that drew how they felt about themselves and that they felt really happy about who they were. Um, and okay, here's another one. What do you think about this one? They didn't quite get to finish it. They were still still coloring it. Yeah, it's complicated, <laughs> confused, mixed feelings, different feelings of different classes. Yeah, this one um, was about them as well, like their own personal feelings about themselves and just different aspects and Anyway, I can't remember everything they said about this one, so I'm not gonna pretend to know. <laughs> but, and then I showed this one when I was doing the other presentation, but I don't think it showed up very well because I was sharing my screen. What do you guys think about this one? A mess, confusion, troubled, chaos, overthinking, another complicated struggle. A lot of pages in my teens' journals look like that. Overwhelmed, frustrated, maybe brain fog. <laughs> Wild and free, furious. Now, this was. Um, a student's feelings about their dad leaving. So um, I didn't want to pry too much. She didn't want to say a whole lot about it. So um, I think it's interesting that there's like pink and blue and black all in there. So, uh, and This was one, she put words on there. I normally tell them not to use words because we like to guess, but this one was also about a family member that never came home. Um, anyway, but I, so as you're 
drawing, whatever your art is, which I hope you guys will share. And maybe we can, you can go ahead and share your screen and we'll maybe just write in and guess. And you don't have to tell us what it is. It's your personal artwork. But um, I, I did this with a correctional facility that had youth in there. And we went around and talked about which ones they had drawn and a number of them started crying as they were sharing and one of them in particular the the person who was over them at this facility she just was completely taken back she's like that boy has never shown any emotion since the day he got here and i'm just blown away that he not only was able to express his emotions through art but also is now physically crying and releasing what what he went through um anyway i just it, it's so powerful i know art has gone from being something that represents history and needing to be representational because they didn't have cameras to now art has become so many different things but one of those um just being a way to express yourself and art in all manners, right? People express themselves through their clothing, through their art, um, through their homes. There's so many different ways that we can express ourselves. So I, I love having the opportunity to give people the chance to, to share their hearts and their souls. And I think artwork is way more meaningful when we do that. I do love to just paint pretty flowers and sunsets and all that as well. But but the most meaningful artwork to me is the stuff that has symbolism surrounding it. So um, let's see, I'm going to give you guys a couple more minutes to draw. And while you're doing that, I'll be right back. I'm going to bring some artwork over. So give me just a sec. So this painting is actually on my Instagram, but I just wanted to share it with you guys really quick. So I <laughs> wanted to paint a self-portrait, but I didn't want to do an actual self-portrait. So I wanted to represent more so like how I feel inside. And I feel happy and bright. There's also like the dark moments, right? But there's so many things that I love to do. I love to travel, I love music, I love dancing, I love Hawaii, I love beautiful flowers, I love lime, like anything with lime in it. <laughs> I love, um, well, I love karaoke, but the microphone's here actually, because I started doing stand-up comedy, which you wouldn't guess from this whole presentation, but that was a big, a big stepping out of my comfort zone for me, and I absolutely loved it. And then of course, I've got some art in there and palm trees and the birds represent um those different friends in my life that come and go and how seasons change and our our time with our friends change so um i'm going to just share my screen really quick and then we'll go back into having you guys share your artwork with everybody and I just want to encourage you to do this. So this is what I normally do with my students. So we'll, we'll go through this exercise and then we'll do it with three other topics. So, and then I encourage you guys to do this as well and list all four and see if your family or a friend can guess which one is which. So for example, um, sorry, this thing keeps, changing my screen for me. Okay, so it says, for example, you could repeat this exercise for an influential person in your life, how you feel about yourself, a difficult moment or a moment of great joy. I mean, the possibilities are endless, really. Um, so 
before I forget, because I'll probably forget at the end, I'm just going to put this info up here in case you want to get in touch with me or connect with me on on Instagram or Facebook. Um, I will just tell you right now, my website is extremely underdeveloped. So don't judge. Well, you can judge. It's okay. But I have not had time. I'm teaching 13 classes plus another six classes after school. So uh, one day we'll get there. But it's melissachipman.com. And then also there's my Instagram is Melita Chipita. And a bunch of my students call me Melita. <laughs> and then my Facebook is just melissa.chipman. So feel free to reach out, connect with me on there. Um, and without further ado, let's stop talking about me and let's talk about you guys. All right. Is anybody willing to share their artwork? I am going to go to my gallery view and see. I see a few people drawing. Looks like Leslie Crossland. You're doing some artwork. Whoop, whoop. Thank you. <laughs> Glad you're doing it along with me. Um, who else is doing some artwork with me? Lisa, Jen, awesome. Angela, did I say that right? Or do you say Angela? <laughs> I don't, Angela, okay. I didn't know who was coming in from Mexico City. And I, didn't, <laughs> yeah, I speak Spanish too. I lived in Paraguay for a while. Cool. So. Lucky you. I love, I love my Hispanic Latino people. Okay. Um, Let's see, anyone else? So let's see, Jen, did you make some artwork that you'd be willing to share? Jen Foltz? Sure, yeah, I was fixing my hair, but yes, I will share. <laughs> that rhymes. Um, so the first, I'm the one that came in late because people needed food all of a sudden. Um, so the first thing that just came immediately just to like get out of my head and actually write something and put it on paper was remembering the memory of, of birth. And so, um, the feelings were impact. Oh, I wasn't supposed to tell y'all. Sorry. <laughs> this is the drawing, but that's the work. Cool. Uh, hey, so the symbol that came to mind was kind of like a sun and then it kind of shifted it into like an eyeball. And, um, my emotions were empowered, which was purple, the purple and the being in a trance, which is the black be feeling raw which is the orange and um, also wet because I was in a tub, so. Um, Jen, that looks so beautiful. It's tough to see on the, in the recording because you're on spotlight, Melissa, if you could just take yourself. Oh, oh. Let's see, how do then I? Can click on um, speaker view. Yeah, yeah, click to active speaker, I think. Oh, okay. Okay, try and talk again. Let's see, hold on. These little dots by your face usually have to drop down. Can y'all see this? Yes. Okay. Funny, mine is really similar, and it's the birth of my daughter also. Oh, I want to see that. Can you see? I'm not sure. Let's see. Hold on one second. I'm still... I'm sorry, guys. I don't know why. Where do I go again, Courtney? So next to your face in the, um, in the video view, you should have three little dots. Uh -huh. And those, they drop down, and it'll say spotlight. You can just click off that cancel the spotlight video right mm -hmm. beautiful thank you sorry everyone i'm back We're in all learning again so i'm rusty on my zoom skills <laughs> okay angela let's see yours again nice so what do you guys think what do you think it represents that's so cool that we have similar symbols <laughs> Birth and we record. did we talked about it was about the birth of our our child and i was like exhausted that's the blue mm. but there's so many things to look forward to so and the colors are similar awesome that's cool 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 all right let's see anybody else that wants to share let's see leslie do you and I don't know if that's your friend with you. Do you guys want to share what you've got? Hello. Hi. Oh man, this is what I did. I guess I'll talk while I show it so you can. Nice. Let's get some guesses in there. 
<laughs> hold it up, hold it up for just a little bit longer. Okay, what are your, what are your guesses? Colors, but that's okay. I'm gonna guess, hmm. I don't know if it's feelings about you, but I mean, the, the middle part seems bright. You said childbirth, meditative, in a trance. I wonder if it's like your heart energy or like how you feel about yourself and like just the feelings are emanating out. I don't know. Yeah, it's like um, expressing myself through creativity and having balance in the expression. Because a lot of times I'll express myself, but I feel like if I'm not balanced, then I'm not very good at communicating. Um, and so it represents like how I feel when I'm in a place of balance and expressing myself. Cool. I like it. Let's see it one more time. Just to confirm that. I like the breaks in it. That that's a good way to represent. Yeah. And kind of those mental. Thank you. Nice. <laughs> All right. Who's your friend? Michael, you might have the. Oh, that's right. That's fine. <laughs> All right. Let's get some guesses. Oh. Fishing in good weather. <laughs> Some creativity like that. Scuba diving. The light trying to overcome the challenges. Looking forward to water activity, but a bit reluctant. Yeah, I feel the last one is probably the most accurate um, as a kid. I am the youngest of three brothers, or four brothers, and uh, learning to water ski, my brothers would like yell shark in the water to the point where like I have PTSD. So like, I kind of view this as like up above aerial view and I'm in the middle right here, splashing and panicking with these sharks swimming around, just ready to come get me. It represents the anxiety, fear, confusion, and uh, pain. Wow. I like that. Thank you so much for sharing. <laughs> All right. Anyone else willing to share what they created? Let me see. I need to expand my screen a little bit. Lisa, did you raise your hand? Am I making that up that you? Cool. All right, what are some guesses there for Lisa's? Let's see, Lisa, I'm gonna unmute you. Am I able to? All right, Lisa. Lisa, can you? There you are, okay. All right, let's get some guesses what you think this represents. <clears throat> Twins, wedding, I think those are some pretty good guesses, mm -hmm. a love for two kids, okay, the many colors of love. All right, Lisa, do you want to tell us about it? So, I, it is wedding. It is wedding. Um, it's our, my second marriage. Um, I, my favorite color is orange. My husband's mm -hmm. favorite color is blue. Mm -hmm. So, um, and I did the yellow for happy around us. Awesome. And the, the two hearts for our close love and then love that we're hoping to <laughs> emanate out to everybody else so i love it that's a great representation thank you thank you so much for sharing and for following along doing some art with us is there anyone else that wants to share i can see mary 
Gablick. Did, were you able to create some artwork tonight? Oh, let's see, let me unmute you. No, not tonight. I, I'm a more of a writer. Okay. Than a, vis, than a visual thing. So I just wrote some images. Uh, last year I went to Australia and I got to go to see what is known as Ayers Rock or Uluru, which is a huge monolith out in the middle of the desert for the mm -hmm. first time. And it was pretty impressive. <laughs> awesome. So that's, that was my memory. Cool. Anyone else that wants to share tonight? I'm just looking through the faces to see if there's anyone else. So I will, I'll tell you how I represented my son's birth. I just, I saw him as this precious new ball of joy that I had coming into my life. And so um, I apologize. I had this painting at home and I forgot <laughs> of all the things. Anyway, but so I painted him as a, a golden sphere. And then because I felt this new responsibility to be with him, I just painted a big and like take, not be with him, take care of him and like raise him. And like, he's my responsibility. I painted a big purple breaststroke because I was born in February. That's my birth month color, right? So a big purple breaststroke going underneath that big ball. Like it was mm -hmm. like, so anyway, that's how I represented my, my son's birth. So, and then I also took gold leaf afterwards and put gold leaf over the sphere. Mm -hmm. so, anyway, but that, there's, there's so many different ways that you can do this. And I just, I also want to invite you guys, if you ever want to go through this exercise with your family or your kids, feel free to reach out to me. I would love to do that with, with a group of friends or whoever you want. Um, I know most of you are spread out all across the country, but if you're in Utah, I also do paint parties and we do all sorts of different stuff and you can basically just send me any painting you want to paint and I can teach you how to paint it. <laughs> so um, this has been so much fun. I've loved being with all of you. Thank you, thank you, thank you for participating. It would have been really boring if no one had done anything, <laughs> uh, but you're awesome. So this was really fun and fun to see Leslie on screen again. And tell me, I'm so sorry, what is your friend's name again? Michael. Michael, okay, that's right. Um, so fun to see Michael and Great to see everyone else on here and Lisa and Jen and Mary and Angela and Donna. Thanks for sharing your screens. It's always easier to do this when when I can see faces too. So anyway, I am not going to ramble anymore, but I'll just show you really quick my, my information in case you want it one more time. And let's connect again so thank you do you guys have any questions for me before i go no but thank you it was so much fun that's a nice way to show your feelings on drawings yeah you're welcome thank oh, you yep you're welcome all right everyone well have an awesome evening and feel free to reach out to me <laughs> Okay, bye, Jen. <laughs> bye, Angela. Goodbye, Lisa. Thank you. You're welcome. Good night. I feel like I'm reading that book. Good night. <laughs> Good night, Moon. <laughs> Good night. <laughs> uh, so funny. All right. Let's see. Um, Courtney, remind me really quick what I need to do to make sure that this records everything. Stop the recording now. Yeah.